What's up design family and welcome back to another episode of Fit Design TV. So glad to have you back on the channel. Before we get started, if you guys are not subscribed, please consider doing so. We put out great content on a week to week basis on all things sportswear, graphic design, manufacturing and logistics, and it would mean the absolute world to us for you to join us along for the ride. On today's episode, we have another measuring tutorial. As sportswear designers, the fit of a garment is of the utmost importance and understanding how we need to fit our garments starts with under understanding the types of measurements that we need to take. These differ between garment types, whether it's a top or a bottom. Today, we'll be looking specifically at shorts. I have a pair of men's performance shorts here with me and I'll be going through the key measurements that you'll need to consider and this is going to help you crush it when it comes to potentially revising a sample that you received in terms of fitting the garment or creating a new fit from scratch for a new design. So we'll go through all the measurements you'll need in this quick and fast episode. Hey guys, and welcome to Fit Design TV. So glad to have you here. On this channel, we discuss all things sports fashion, graphic design, manufacturing, and technology. We'll discuss key topics, answer pressing questions, and provide actionable steps on starting your own product line. If you're interested in any of the above topics, stick around, you're in for a good one. So getting right into it, you need three key things for any measurement session. Number one, you'll need the garment that you're measuring. This should ideally be in the size that you typically wear. So if you're fitting or you use a size medium to fit your measurements, your size that you're measuring should be a size medium. Also, you'll need a flat surface, making sure that you have a completely flat surface that doesn't have any bumps or any irregularity irregularities is going to be key towards getting an accurate measurement. And the last thing is you need a reliable, flexible tailor tape. The tailor tape that we're using is made out of fiberglass. It's very simple. Use. If you guys have watched the channel before, you've seen this mentioned many, many times. I cannot recommend it enough. We have our inches on one side and our centimeters on the other side. For the purpose of this video, we'll be measuring in inches. And we've done a separate video in the past where we've taken you through how to read the measurements on an eighth scale measuring tape that I highly recommend you check out. So we're going to get right into it and we'll look at this regular pair of shorts. We're going to need to consider two key types of measurements for our shorts. We're going to consider our horizontal measurements, AKA our waist width, our thigh opening width, and our leg opening width, as well as our vertical measurements. These are things like our outseam and our inseam. And I'll start off with our horizontal measurements. When it comes to our horizontal measurements, we'll typically start off going from up to down. We have two key measurements on the waistband that we'll need to measure. And it's extremely important to make sure that your garment is laid completely flat out with the fabric unstretched, but at the same time uncompressed. So making sure that you're getting a true reading of the fabric. Also, bear in mind, for a lot of these measurements, we're giving the half measurements. So these are not necessarily circumference measurements, nor are they specific measurements that you would find on a consumer based sizing chart. These are technical measurements and they are intended to help a pattern maker create an accurate and well fitted garment. We'll go first for our waist half width measurements. So this is measured from the top left of the waistband all the way to the top right. This is a size medium for reference. So we'll go left to right. Again, you can go right to left. It's your preference, but here we have approximately 14, uh, actually exactly 14 for our waist half width measurement. So this is where the waistband is going to hit at the top. Typically, you'll also have another measurement at the bottom of the waistband. This is going to be taken from pretty much bottom left corner of the waistband to bottom right corner of the waistband. This is called our top hip half width measurement. You'll see this a lot on ladies leggings. The taper in on the waist is quite extreme. You can almost have probably an inch to two inches of difference between your waist half width and your top half width measurement. In this case, we have our top half width and if we go straight across, perpendicular across, we have here 15. So again, we can see the difference between our top hip and our bottom or our widest, sorry, our waist half width, which is at the top and our top hip half width, which is right here. It's almost an inch. And this is done because obviously your 
waistline goes out as you come in. So in order to be able to compress comfortably and to actually sit at your waist, you almost need to cinch in towards the top of the waistband. And this is even more accentuated on ladies' items. Moving on from there, we have what is known as our widest hip half width measurement. This is a bit tricky. Typically what I notice is the widest hip half width measurement is found somewhere around the three quarter mark of the front rise. And it differs between waistband to waistband or garment to garment. But in this case, we almost have to stretch out the fabric, make sure that we're not overly stretching it out, letting it sit where it naturally needs to sit. And if we go all the way across from the widest point to the widest point, here we see this is around 20.75 or 20 and three quarters. And why is this measurement important? Well, it's important for one primary reason. Once we determine how the fabric or the garment sits on the waist, we need to know how it drapes over the hips. A very narrow waist or widest hip half width measurement is going to press up against the sides of your legs and it's going to create a very awkward situation when you're walking. You're going to feel the fabric rubbing on the inside of your legs. And it's going to be a generally uncomfortable situation. So making sure that you have enough clearance on the widest hip half width measurement is extremely important, especially for running apparel, where you need that flexibility on the hips in order to move your legs properly. Moving on from the widest hip half width, we'll go down, we have our thigh opening half width. So this typically sits at the bottom of where you measure your front rise, right around where the fabric ends and we go out perpendicularly to the out seam. This is a very important measurement and it essentially measures the clearance that you have for your thigh when you're wearing your shorts. If it's too tight, it's again gonna cause a lot of chafing, it's gonna be extremely uncomfortable and unflexible. And if it's too wide, you're gonna get a lot of fabric bunching up on the front and that's also gonna look extremely awkward and is a mark of a ill-fitted garment. So going from here, we see and since this garment has a gusset, typically with a gusseted item, I like to go from the center not line of a gusset because this gusset also tends to curve to the back. This is a bit of a special case scenario, but we are going to find our gusset half line and we'll go all the way perpendicularly out to the out seam. Here we have our on 12, which is congruent with what I'm used to for a men's medium short. It's important to note that you have slight differences in the ways that different people measure. I've never met two designers that measure the exact same way, but it's important within your own workflow to maintain consistency. For us, when we have a gusset, we'll go for the halfway gusset line. And if we don't have a gusset, typically we go to where the fabric ends. You'll notice if you don't have a gusset that this entire front rise line is a bit higher up. The gusset is typically there to allow more clearance to open up the inseam to create more flexibility. So it's typically a little bit dropped. Next, we'll also need to consider our leg opening half width. Leg opening half width is extremely open, is extremely, extremely easy. And usually when it comes to the relationship with a thigh opening half width and a leg opening half width, our leg opening is typically between 0.5 to one inch smaller than our thigh opening. Our thigh is usually the biggest part. It's the part that needs the most amount of clearance and our leg opening, depending on how long the garment is, will get smaller or even much smaller depending on where it sits on the inseam. Usually you notice longer garments as your leg starts to taper down will have a smaller leg opening half width. Garments that tend to sit higher up will have a wider leg opening half width like running shorts. Again, you need that flexibility as well. So an easy way to measure this is make sure that your garment is laid out flat, that you're not stretching out your fabric and you're going from end of fabric all the way to end of fabric. And again, here we're getting around 11.75, which confirms the theory that our leg opening half width is typically smaller than our thigh opening half width. Now that we've looked at our horizontal measurements, let's look at the key vertical measurements that we'll need to consider. The key vertical measurements that most people will think of are either the inseam or the outseam. And we'll start off with the outseam. The outseam is quite, quite simple. Make sure that your garment is laid out flat on the floor and that we're going from the top of the waistband straight down all the way to the bottom of where you're getting the end of the fabric. So here we'll go down, measure straight, and we have an outseam of 18.25 approximately. Then we have our inseam. Our inseam again is a little bit tricky here because we do have a gusset 
Usually here with our inseam, I will take the halfway of the gusset line and I'll make sure that I'm aligning it with where the front rise or the rise line would project. So if I was to take this rise line, which is right here, come down straight, go to the halfway mark of the gusset, typically around here, and I will project outwards for my inseam. I'm getting an inseam of around 7.25, which again is in line with what I'm expecting of this. So we have our outseam, we have our inseam. Next, we'll look at our front rise. Our front rise, again, is quite important. It's basically taking the garment, laying it out flat. It's a bit more tricky if you have a gusset. You almost have to figure out where your gusset is going to naturally sit. But I like to just make sure that everything's stretched out, getting the fabric that would typically sit at the front. And I'll go from the top of the front of the waistband. And what's really interesting is you'll notice the back of the waistband and the front of the waistband don't sit at the same level. There's a simple reason for that. We typically have a bit more mass on the backs of our bodies for obvious reasons. So we need more or we need a higher back rise for the garment to sit perfectly on our hips. You'll notice a lot of garments, they don't sit straight. There's a bit of a rise on the back and this is reflected very clearly in this measurement. Again, depending on the type of garment, I've seen leggings where this difference between the front and back rise can be as large as two inches. And it all depends on the specific garment and the specific type of design you're going for. But it's also important to make sure that your back rise isn't so much taller than your front rise. You may get some slippage from the front or you may get way too much fabric from the back. Again, it is a delicate balance and you learn this with time. When it comes to your front rise, make sure you measure from the top of the front of the waistband all the way down to the very bottom of where the fabric ends. Making sure that you're not stretching the fabric, but at the same time, you're not compressing it. You don't have any unnecessary folds that are changing the ways in which we actually have our measurement taken. So in this case, we have 14 point, we have a measurement of almost 14, and that is our front rise. That's pretty much it, guys. When it comes to both of our horizontal and our vertical measurements, it's important that you're taking everything holistically. One set of measurements or a measurement set that doesn't include some of these key measurements will not give you the entire story. So make sure that you watch this video, take down the notes that you need to. And if you guys enjoyed this video, you've learned a thing or two, please consider smashing a thumbs up. It really does help us out. I always love giving these little technical tutorials because I had to learn it the hard way through trial and error, but hopefully you guys can benefit from this. And again, thank you so much for tuning into this episode of Fit Design TV. Until next week's episode, stay awesome.